Good afternoon. We've decided to uh, make some room and we're gonna go ahead and plant a tree in our uh, raised bed here. For the most part, we've been dedicating this spot just for growing our vegetables. But, you know, sacrifices have to be made and in order for some of the trees to be better in the ground, um, we're gonna just put them in the ground. So, um, we are going to be putting this uh, Red Israel Adamoya in the ground today. Um, <clears throat> so, just wanted to go do with you a couple of things. Being that this is a raised bed that we've had for a while, the, the dirt is pretty good. If you look at the soil, it is very loose. I mean, it's, it's crumbly. This is uh, just native uh, clay soil. So, the roots are not going to have any problem um, exploring and going out of its boundary. And this raised bed is sitting on top of the native dirt. So it's going to be able to extract the nutrients from nearby uh, areas, regions. So why are we putting this in the ground as opposed to leaving it in a container and just maybe upsizing it? There's a couple of advantages in having it in the ground. First of all, this is an edamoya, so I know it's going to do really well in the Central Valley's dirt, including just clay soil. It, it does pretty well in clay soil. When you put a plant, a tropical plant, in the ground, it's able to exchange or border uh, nutrients and other resources with the mycorrhizal network, commonly known as the wood wide web, similar to the world wide web. A short description of what the mycorrhizal network is, is basically the mycorrhizal fungi that's in the ground. It's, it's already present in the ground that we st are standing on. But essentially what it does is the roots of the tropical plants, the plants, they border with these mycorrhizal uh, fungi. The fungi needs um, sugar. Uh, and in exchange, the fungi actually gives uh, nutrients that's not available to the plant's roots just because the fine guy is able to get to the crevices of the dirt better than you know these big old roots. So they exchange nutrients basically. I mean I, I would imagine the language being that you know the fine guy is saying hey you know I've got some n nutrient did you want some nutrients but you know in exchange you're gonna have to give me some sugar and then the plant in return is saying, yeah, I've got a lot of sugar. You know, there's this human being that sprays me with sugar every two weeks. So I've got plenty of that. So what they do is they simply just exchange nutrients. So we're going to go and put that in the ground now. The, the hole that I dug is roughly twice the size of this container. And roughly uh, maybe one and a half uh, size deep. But, um, like I said, this does pretty well in our soil, but, but, what I do is just as a practice procedure, I actually amend the soil. So, I've got here, what I've got here is my mixture of soil. So, what I'm going to do is uh, amend it. And what I mean by amending is basically adding nutrients to it. This is just a uh, mostly nitrogen fertilizer, organic, of course. And uh, as a mite, this is a uh, rock dust containing a uh, trace mineral that the plants do need. And fertilizer. Um, I particularly like this fertilizer just because it does already have the mycorrhiza fungi in it. Um, if you look at the back, there's basically two types of mycorrhiza fungi. Um, one, uh, first type is known as an ecto, uh, and then the second type is known as an endo. Ecto basically actually permeates the roots of the tree and basically attaches themselves to the inside of the host tree and then exchanges uh, and bargains uh, the nutrients that way. Endo. Actually, I'm sorry, I take it back. It's opposite. Ecto is the one that sits outside. Endo is inside. 
So I'm going to go and apply some of that to it. This also contains uh, beneficial uh, bacteria as well as uh, in addition to um, uh, fungi. So add it in. So although this already has some forms of beneficial uh, fungi in it, I'm going to add my own. I'm going to add some more to it. This is mostly uh, actually all endo. So endo is the type that uh, attaches themselves to the roots of the, um, the plants. So think of um, mycorrhizal network as being our, the, the gut bacteria for our stomach. I mean, if your microbiome is out of whack, you're probably going to get sick quite a bit. I mean, when you look at the human body, there are more non-human in us than there are human cells. So there's a symbiotic relationship that happens in our body and same with the trees. So I'm going to go and just mix that up. And so in addition to the soil I prepared, I'm also going to add about half of it uh, of the native soil. What that does is it prevents the tree from going into shock once its roots um, are able to penetrate outside of this hole. So it should be familiar with the native soil already. So just mix it all in. Again, uh, you know, in my situation, I do have an unfair advantage just because this raised bed has already been prepped for growing plants. Uh, although what we've got in this raised bed is primarily bacteria dominated. And what I mean by that is vegetables prefer soil that is heavy in bacteria. And trees on the other hand prefer soil that is heavy in fungal, such as mycorrhizal fungal. But overall, they do coexist. So, there you go. Gonna go and just uh, put it up. In my case, what I normally like to do is pan it slightly above grade. And what happens is when you water it, the soil actually settles down, so it eventually becomes at grade. And what I mean by uh, above grade is, this is the soil line, and if you look at the pot, the container, it is sitting right at the soil line. So I'm going to add just a bit more just to make it above grade. There you go. Just eye it just a bit. That should be good. All right. And one tip. If you know you are going to plant a containerized plant in the ground, don't water it. Water it, as in don't water it when it's in a container because it's gonna, there's a chance that what you've got in here may just kind of crumple apart, which is obviously not good. So, here goes. This is a small one, so it's relatively easy. Just uh, try your best to be gentle, but you know, it is what it is. Look at that. It's, uh, it's ready to come out. Just put it in the ground gently. And that is the position that I want it. Next thing for me to do, literally, is just to uh, fill it back up with this mixture of soil that we've got, along with all the nutrients that, it, that were mixed in. All right. Here comes the dirty part. Make it as tight as you can, getting out all the uh, air pockets and bubbles. Make 
There you go. So next thing for us to do, just like my previous videos, is I like to create a little berm. That way when we water it, it stays in the well and penetrates deep into the root system. So that's basically the gist of it. One of the last things we're going to do, specific to this tree, which I'm not a fan of, but for the long-term health of the tree, and because I do want this guy to make it through winter. See these guys? Yep. Uh, we're going to have to take them out. You don't have to, but I do want this guy to focus mostly on its roots establishment as opposed to uh, dedicating its resources to food production. So it's going to get plenty of time next year to uh, give me some fruits. So here it goes. You can't tell but I'm, I'm crying inside. But that's alright. Because this guy is going to do great next year. It's like plucking your babies. Yep, here we go. It's got to be done. So in plucking away any flowers and fruits, uh, the tree should know to send most of its resources to its new home. And it should grow nicely. So Really, the last thing for me to do is just water so, down. This should be the end result. This should be what it looks like. Again, just uh, emphasis on creating that berm there. I mean, if you if you don't create one, I mean, it's it's gonna be it's likely gonna be okay. But me personally, I mean, I, I like the water to remain where the root ball is, um, and um, just uh, where the where the rain drip is, and just let it slowly saturate the roots and. Um, and basically to uh, make it so where the tree now knows that it's free of the confines of the container. So yeah, this guy should do really well. Um, again, you know, I'm, I'm still crying inside because, you know, I did just lose all that crop, I suppose. But sacrifices have to be made in order for these guys to live, uh, well, not only live, but drive in the Central Valley. So that's it.